Hi everybody, welcome back to Scotty's Take Out Info. I'm Scotty, with my co-host Cletus. Um, this is episode number two of Eek, the electrical engineering class. Um, in the last episode, I covered uh, volts, amps, and watts, i.e., voltage, current, and power. And in this episode, I want to talk about the difference between uh, DC and AC. Um, direct current versus alternating current. Um, this can get a little hairy, at least the AC part, so I'm gonna try to keep it simple and probably expand it uh, slowly. So, right, let's take a look. Okay, so everyone understands uh, DC for the most part. I mean, if you have, if you've ever used a battery, it's pretty simple. I mean, it's even labeled on the side, you know, you've got this is the plus terminal, and this is the minus terminal. And as I talked about in the last video, you have this difference in electrical potential, and a current flows. But it's a direct current, because if we draw this, uh, direct current basically means that you have, here's your, this is a chemical battery, and it's such that if you have your, your gizmo here, which we will call G, and you connect electrical wires up to it here, and back to here, uh, it's very simple. You get electrons flow this way through your through your device which does stuff and then the return is back this way and the current all, only ever flows in one direction the voltage is 9 volts the current always flows in this direction that's it that's direct current ac is I, you know, I drew the picture earlier of, of the battery, you know, we have our battery, we have our simple circuit, it flows in one direction. With AC, things are a little different. With AC, you have, uh, you still have two wires, right? So let's say this is coming from your, your power plug, right? You still have <clears throat> two wires, but instead of hooking up a battery, <clears throat> what you have is your, your, uh, your gizmo here can be a toaster or whatever and you still have your wires connected to it but what happens is <clears throat> the current is alternating so at one instant the electrons flow this way right in the next instant first they flow this way then in the next instant they're gonna flow that way so the current kind of goes this way, and then this way, and then this way, and then this way. Well, why in the hell would you do that? Because if you just have a simple battery, right? I mean, it's, it's just, it's, why do they do that? Okay, uh, they do alternating current because... <clears throat> I'm going to use a, a little... You have to actually look at a uh, pretty piece of paper here. Um, this is essentially the, the uh, a mathematical representation of um, alternating current. Now, for the, for the time being, just ignore the blue and the red. This is actually the waveform of alternating current. So well, what the heck does that mean? It's actually really simple. All it is is a sine wave, this black line here. And all it means is that here, you're zero. So when it starts climbing up like this, the voltage and the current are getting higher, 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 until they peak, i.e. the current's going in this direction in our circuit, right? And when it reaches the peak, it's, it's the maximum voltage and current that's going like this. And then it starts to descend, which means instead of going like, it kind of goes, it slows down until it hits the zero point, and then it reverses direction and goes back in the other direction till it goes down, and then it slows down, and then it gets here and it reverses direction. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <clears throat> now, why on earth would you want such a complicated system? Right, you may have noticed that when you see power lines, they usually come in threes. Well, why three? That's because there were some smart dudes who invented three-phase power. That's why there is, in fact, written phase one, phase two, phase three. Now you can pay attention to the red and the blue. 
Without getting totally complicated, well, it's going to get complicated, but I'll make a valiant effort. In the last video, I talked about volts, amps, and watts, um, and conductivity versus conductors versus insulators. Every electric conductor, like, say, copper, when the electrons flow through it and each neighbor passes it along to the guy next door, um, it doesn't flow, the electrons don't get passed along with, with no resistance. Uh, and literally, they call it resistance, electrical resistance. And what it means is that electron, electrons are not free to flow effortlessly through the copper conductor. It means that, that any time electricity is being conducted, there's going to be a resistance to that whole passing the electron on to your neighbor. And this generates heat. So that's why if you have a very thin copper wire, like if you have this thin copper wire, and you have whatever voltage, and you try to stuff way too much current through this wire, if you've got too many electrons shooting through this thing, it heats up. That's because even good conductors like copper have a resistance. There's a limit to the amount of electrons you can stuff through this thing at one time. Let's say you have uh, an entire town, right? And you want to power that whole town. If everything was direct current, you're in big trouble. Because power equals voltage times current, right? So if you have a fixed voltage, say, uh, 230 volts, say, in, in, uh, or 120 volts in North America and a few other places, we'll, we'll say 230 volts. You've got 230 volts, right? Now, for a given amount of power, power equals voltage times current. Power equals 230 volts times I, your current in amperes. So that's, that's going to mean that everyone's house is at 230 volts but they each need their own giant load of current. So this guy, this house needs, you know, uh, 80 amps, and he needs 100 amps, and he needs 100 amps, and he's got 150 amps, and, and so suddenly you have this, m this monstrous quantity of power. And with direct current, your voltage is fixed at 230 volts, but you still need to supply those hundreds and hundreds of amps of current, which means you can't use a wire like this because it's too thin. Because of resistance, when you try to stuff all that current that people need over that wire, it's going to heat up and eventually melt, and then sparks will fly everywhere, and it'll be totally awesome. So the beauty of AC power is the smart people who came up with it um, basically had the idea of when you're using this, this, uh, this alternating current, because it's actually changing direction, you can put it into a, uh, a, a wonderful gizmo called a transformer. So let's see if we can do this simply. A transformer is basically a gizmo which looks like that. This is kind of the, the schematic for it. All it is is a big chunk of metal, and on one side you have some copper windings, and on the other side you have some copper windings wound around this metal core. And it's just a magnetic gizmo. When a current flows through a coil, um, it induces a magnetic field. And if you alter the number of turns here, like say if you have, you know, um, these numbers are bogus, but let's just go with it for the sake of the example. You have 10 turns of wire here, and you have uh, um, a thousand turns of wire here. Then what happens is, if you put, say, uh, 200, let's say we, we put in 230 volts here, at, say, uh, 10 amps. What happens is you put 230 volts and 10 amps in here, and at the output of your transformer, you get 100 times as much. So at the output, you're going to get 100 times as much, so 230, 0, 0. You're going to get 23,000 volts, but you're going to have 100 100 times less current. That's the trick of a transformer. It, it, it will, if it steps up the voltage, it steps down the current, and vice versa. So, it steps the voltage up by a factor of, this is a factor, a ratio of 1 to 100. 1,000 divided by 10 is 100, so this is 100 times more turns than this. So you put 230 volts in, you get 23,000 volts out, 100 times more, and this is going to be 100 times less. So you're going to end up with 0 0.1 amps. 
Now this is the beauty, because as I said, with this wire, if you try to stuff too much current over this wire, it's going to overheat. When you've got all those houses that need hundreds and hundreds of amps, you can't put it over this thin wire. But when you have AC, if you have DC and you put it into this, this coil, nothing happens. That's the magic of AC. Because it's the current's going like this and then it switches direction, it's, it's, it's a, an increasing and decreasing current is actually going to create an increasing and decreasing magnetic field, which then makes the transformer actually work. If you put DC in a transformer, nothing happens. That's the, that's the simple explanation. So it's the fact that you have AC and the fact that you can then put it in a transformer you can boost the voltage really high, which also simultaneously reduces the current, because here the power is the same. 230 volts times 10 amps is 2300 watts. Ah, but notice 23,000 times one-tenth of an amp is also 2300. So a transformer doesn't create, or it doesn't do anything to the power. It simply allows, due to the alternating current, it allows you to step the voltage up really high and take the current and shrink it way down. And what that means is that for a given amount of power, let's write those numbers down, because this is actually 2300 watts, and this is also 2300 watts. You can get a calculator and do the math, but pretty simple. So, so the whole point is <clears throat> we use AC because uh, that's why you have these guys. Instead of having to supply 230 volts and hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of amps, what they do is they generate power, they feed it through a transformer, and they get a high voltage lines. And that's why you have these high voltage, these, these towers with the widely separated wires, and they go, oh, danger, high voltage. That's because this voltage is really, really, really super high. But because it's super high, the amount of current flowing is really, really, really tiny. And then when it gets to your neighborhood, they do the reverse of this. You basically have another transformer, but you feed you feed this high voltage and low current into the transformer, and that steps it back down. That's a step down. This is a step up transformer before it's being sent out on the power lines. When it gets to your neighborhood, they do the reverse of this: feed your high voltage and high current, oh, sorry, high voltage and low current in, and that steps the voltage down to 230 volts, but it gives you all your current back. So the whole point of AC is magical sine waves. Magical transformers, that allows you to transmit huge, huge, huge amounts of power to your neighborhood or your industrial park or whatever without having giant, enormous wires. Because again, if it was DC, you, you couldn't actually, you can actually transmit a lot of power over this wire if you're using a very super high voltage. At 230 volts, you can send about 16 amps over this safely. That's what it's rated for. Um, if the insulation of the wire was improved, you could send, instead of 230 volts, you could send 23,000 volts over it. Of course, the insulation would have to be very thick, because the higher the voltage, the more likely it is to break down the insulation. Um, anyway, that's the reason why we don't have uh, DC powering our houses. Uh, anyway, if you have any questions, send me some comments, because I maybe need to re-explain some things or explain them better. So um, let me know. And thanks for watching. See you next time.